thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it and so happy you made it. So uh, if you uh, uh, are ready to go, the floor is yours. And please help us understand, uh, Mr. Dimitri, about the concept of uh, how neuroscience empowers digital experience. Now, Mr. Dimitri Gaiduk is a co-founder and a chief production officer at uh, Cool Tool, which is a cool name. All right, let's go for it. We can't wait to hear from you, uh, Dimitri. All yours. Thank you for having me here. And uh, uh, it's, it's a big pleasure. And uh, I really like all the topics you raised uh, today. Um, I was listening. It's, it's really so interesting. And for me, you know, I have 25 years in insights and market research background. And uh, it's kind of passion. It all goes from my heart. And I uh, really love actually all these things we are doing, measuring this passion of our consumers, passion of um, users, and uh, converting these measurements, converting all this knowledge into something very, uh, really actionable and uh, practical. And we, um, uh, in fact, mm, uh, this is uh, our focus. So uh, at one moment of our story, we uh, shifted from traditional market research from, to, from providing consultancy to providing technologies. And we were thinking how we can use the knowledge we have about neuroscience, about uh, uh, traditional market research into something uh, from what every business could benefit. And we, I believe we did something and, and like we have that experience and I would like to share this with you. So I will share my screen, just a second. So, and I hope you can see it. Could you please confirm you can see my screen? Hello, can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Show me. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, uh, why this topic is really important today? Why uh, and how neuroscience could empower digital experience? What is digital experience at all? Digital experience, in fact, this is very important. I would say this is the most crucial nowadays. This is most crucial part of customer experience. Customer experience is where user interacts with our brand. It could be offline, it could be online, it could be just using our product, but now everything is going digital. All the sales are going digital. Last year, um, like in 2020, um, okay, not, not like two years ago, it was a big boom due to the COVID and um, a really peak of these uh, online sales. But even after that, it's 15% uh, for most of the categories in the US. And we, we can see that right now, all the popular, uh, like a few years ago, we, we even can't imagine this. Right now, uh, more than 5 billion population use mobile phones. The internet users also uh, around 5 billion people. Um, um, social, active social media users, around 5 million. So this channel become, uh, becoming more uh, and more important. And right now, probably this is the most important channel. And digital experience is actually that part of customer experience where we interact with products or with brands digitally. And that part is really, really important. But at the same time, we can see that that part is really often, it's really broken. It's like our experiences are not good. We are trying to do something, we are trying to buy for example, some tickets and we can do this. We are trying to buy some goods, we can find them. We can uh, we, um, go in for the website and we experience uh, some errors on those websites. And all these things actually um, be, uh, for us, it's kind of uh, really blockers and these are bad impressions and bad customer experience in digital environment. And it's not only about pure um, UI or UX. It's also about content. 
which is not always optimized for us, not always optimized for the device we use, not always, even sometimes it's simply not interesting, or sometimes the content, it's just like fancy picture that distract us from the main goal why we became for this uh, why we came for this uh, website why we uh, even like from our main objective so um, actually improving that ui ux and improving the content inside of digital environments this is a big big area and we are just in the beginning right now we are trying to do this and um, with uh, neuroscience and neuroscience really helps us and why neuroscience and why not just traditional surveys? Actually, as a researcher, I always say that if you are not doing anything, do the survey. At least it's better than uh, live without any feedback in your, let's say, uh, virtual reality. But the best answer will be from David Ogilvy that consumers don't think how they feel. They don't say what they think and they don't do what they say. This is really, really important point, especially when we are talking about digital behavior, because in, inside of uh, digital environments, our brain works the same way. We still using system one to make all our decisions. Our brain still trying to save all the resources all the time and use patterns. Like if we did some process and it was successful, we are following that process next time and next time and next time. Our brain avoids any additional work. And it, it's, it, it's relevant for the offline and it's relevant for the digital environments. This is um, important. And this is how neuroscience really help us. And it uh, help us, I was trying to categorize this in like three main topics. So first, with neuroscience, with absorbing and understanding user behavior, we can discover and explain why of consumer, uh, consumer behavior, we discover the real customer journey, we can understand how they go, how they reach their goals online. It doesn't matter, like they can reach the goal to get some information or to buy something, but how they're doing this, like step by step, why they're doing like this? How they're doing this across different channels? They could have one experience inside uh, on their desktop, another experience on their mobile devices. Sometimes it's even mixed with the offline experience. So it could be an omni-channel experience. And neuroscience will help us to understand this. Another part is about creating better user experience. So we can test everything what we offering to our customers. We can test prototype. We can test um, you know, desktop and mobile websites. We can test. We can optimize UI and UX because we understand how each element works. And I will go into more details now um, uh, how we can apply this. And we can produce content that really works. That really works. That we can measure attention to that con uh, co uh, um, content. We could measure emotions. We could measure um, how um, trustable or how impactful that content we put into the digital environments. And we use neuroscience, neuroscience based insights for all these three topics. And this is where I will, um, uh, what I will show today too. So uh, to measure attention, we use mostly, actually we focus, like we, we really love labs. We love labs with very accurate uh, uh, hardware, with uh, uh, advanced technologies. It's not always uh, easy to set up those labs. And uh, we are uh, big fans of the idea that to be widely used, technology could be really kind of commodity. So it could be used everywhere. Um, by any researcher, because if it's a very expensive lab for the website owner or like for even like for medium CPG company, that could be too expensive. But if you're just enabling webcam for your respondents and they could do this study remotely, uh, it's not a problem. They could run this study um, uh, in the internet like they're doing online surveys. And we could uh, use AI 
and use webcam to understand both facial expressions and emotions and understand where the attention goes at each moment of their journey. But even measuring the attention, we need to be aware of at least two things that actually the whole our, our behavior is driven, driven by attention. Like in offline, uh, uh, we, uh, actually our brain is scanning everything according to the purpose, according to the objective. And also these scan patterns and our attention, um, attention behavior is different depending on the situation. So if you are looking for one particular object, we already have this uh, idea, our brain has idea how to do this. And um, uh, in another situation, with the same environment, with the same website, we could behave completely different way. And that's why we always recommend our clients that always test in context and always use task-based exercises. Don't do just like open, uh, 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 open testing of anything. It's, it could be the case, but not always, like in most cases, we need to test in context and use task-based exercises. And getting that and uh, using this technology to measure the attention, we could measure the real behavior. So we can actually see uh, through the eye of our consumers, how users behave online, how they, uh, like where the gaze goes, what do they read before clicking something, when they're clicking something, how they're clicking something. So we can understand, we can uh, see the whole customer journey, like page by page, and on each page, we can see all the elements. And we can do this with uh, 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 current age technologies for different environments. We can do this for uh, prototypes. We can do this with uh, live mobile and desktop devices, uh, web websites. Sorry, and we can do this for uh, live mobile apps. So we could be together with customer, do this shop along or do this uh, discovery study all the time. All the time they're doing something on the device, of course, with their permission. They are not spying like all these like user testing. Um, and um, uh, we can see how they navigate, how they engage, what are the expression, but they're not satisfied. Of course, we can also uh, ask survey questions and record the voice. But this power of observation is huge. And we can optimize different elements on the, uh, inside, of our, uh, uh, inside of our digital experiences. And we use different, uh, slightly different approaches. You can see that it's very um, similar, but has some peculiarities. So to test the content, we use the framework that was our content even visible. So can user even scroll to this content? Then did they really pay attention to this content? Did the content provoke uh, some interest? Was it persuasive? Was it trustable? Especially like uh, when we're going, when we discuss uh, with uh, all of, I think we discussed this topic recently that like, okay, the website for fundraising you, um, everyone will say that, oh no, yes, I, I, I would like to contribute. Uh, 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 I, I agree, this is like a good topic. But, and they will not tell you like in most cases, they do not actually trust in this product. And that's why they escaped. And there are technology how to measure this trust with implicit measurements. And then of course, engagement. Whether they click, how do they click? What was on their face when they clicked somewhere? or when they experience some problems, or like we can see those emotional and behavioral engagements. And it's a little bit different story for navigation. If for the content, we need to have something really like provoking interest, the longer users stay with the content, the more interacting with the content, the better. The interface and elements of navigation should be visible, of course, to easy to find, noticeable, and it should be very, uh, it should be the clarity that like, okay, I know that this element leads to the goal. 
or this is misleading element. And this way we can improve usability of websites of, or digital products. And of course, it should provoke some engagements. And, and using that, we have different visualizations. We have, and this is, uh, all these are automated. So you can see that, okay, how many people like this whole time map? How many people scroll to this place? How many people stay there? Because especially on mobile device, we're just doing like this scroll. Blah, 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 blah. And you know, it's completely different from the desktop where we scroll carefully um, and you can miss half of the website. So was our part even visible? Then we can build on heat map and on capacity map to see which part was visible, in which order, where they pay attention first and, uh, um, uh, and or uh, second, or, uh, or maybe they did not pay attention at all. Then the interest, how many repeated views? Again, it's good when you return to the content and um, a repeated interest to the content is good, but repeated interest toward the a navigation element means problem because from the first time you notice that element, it was not clear for you that that element leads you to the uh, final objective. And this way we're using this neuromarketing insights to understand if content is engaging or if uh, navigation is uh, efficient, how we can improve those engagement, where they click, um, and how they feel these emotional heat maps. We can also build, uh, build this. And this is very helpful for uh, us. And we can build statistics and these statistics are uh, adopted for each particular need, uh, for navigation elements, for content elements. So there are plenty of insights we can get with neuroscience for, to improve customer and user experience. And then, as I mentioned, sorry, uh, I, I really have this in this presentation really flight over all of these techniques. It will be uh, hours to, to cover all this, but I want to give this the big idea uh, that yes, we can absorb user behavior. We can measure efficiency of both content and navigation elements and improve them. And we can measure trust. And for that, we have implicit testing exercises. I don't know how many of this audience are aware of these exercises. We use response time tests to measure confidence in consumer opinion regarding brand perception or interface perception. And these are results. We can measure the confidence index uh, for different statements for different products. And we're using implicit priming tests, especially for the topics where your opinion could be uh, socially charged or uh, it could be uh, kind of uh, uh, not very open opinion about something. We use even to evaluate uh, experiences of users inside of digital area, we use implicit priming test and we can say how they feel about that depending on the experience they have. How, uh, because again, uh, digital experiences are the same experiences, users uh, and, and same implicit memories, users collecting about brands or about products. Uh, it's just done digital way. It's no different. Actually, users not, never think that this is digital, this is not digital. For us, this is just a topic like to focus because this is a new, big, great area. But for the user, this is a consistent part of the uh, behavior. And we could measure this uh, reaction rate. We can segment users, how they really, do they have this connection between brand and different characteristics or they don't have. And who can benefit out of these insights? These are uh, like three big segments, but I, I believe pretty one else also could benefit. And these three big segments are environments owners, like we, by, by environments means like e-commerce you know, owners, like Amazon, Walmart, Target, improving a little bit conversion on their website leads to big sales. Media websites, engaging content, very important. Social media. Uh, uh, or like uh, uh, owners uh, uh, and any website owner, improving conversions is equal to sales. Content makers for video producers, for influencers, for educational pro platforms, the more engaging content, the better conversions, the better, better sales you have, better uh, results you have. Brands who really need to understand how users behave online and how users, um, uh, uh, why they behave this way and how they improve things like putting different 
product image or improving this post from the influencer in social media so they could, uh, they could do better. So brands are also interested. So this is a huge opportunity. This is huge business for both researchers, for um, uh, technologists, for um, brands and companies to improve those digital experiences. And really like one or two minutes, like how we do this with uh, platforms. We have the platform called Cool Tool for, it's automated survey platform with integrated emotions measurement, eye tracking, behavioral tracking, and implicit reaction time measurement. We have UX reality for qualitative insights. It's actually recording all these sessions. And it's currently in beta testing, but it's already there. This is direct reality. So we, in fact, analyzing the structure of code of each website, we can aggregate data and provide it in quantitative way I demonstrated to you today. And uh, it's important that it's not only user testing for uh, DX reality, it's also could be passive measurement when you integrate in this piece of code into your website and you can collect this data passively without eye tracking and emotions, but collecting that behavior. And, and those, at most moment you need to explain the behavior, you collecting, um, uh, connecting camera and collecting these neuromarketing insights. And um, all this connected to automated panels. So you can choose your audience. You can do uh, more than 100 million respondents worldwide and collect this data everywhere. So this uh, neuromarketing insights for digital experience could be really simple and affordable. No, I'm, I'm lying. So they're not that simple. It's, you still need some time to figure out like how it works, uh, why we need one or another thing. But the things are changing. Many industries going digital and disrupting. And we believe this is the time for market research, for insights, and for um, neuroscience-based insights to improve these digital experiences of users. Sorry for being a little bit late. Thank you, Dimitri. This has been, this has been totally uh, tantalizing idea, and you showed it in a very, very visible, noticeable, clear, and engaging way. <laughs> and I can tell, and many of us can tell. So uh, are you done with the presentation, or we're moving on? Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, got, yeah, like, yeah, I'm done. yeah, yeah, I'm ready. You're done with it? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. come again? Yeah, yeah, done yeah I'm good, yeah, okay, I'm ready for brilliant. Q&A, yeah. Brilliant. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, it was a very dense presentation. It was truly attractive one. And you just were, you know, tapping into the things that, that you have already done. So these are the things that you're already there, that are happening and people are going to get use of those kind of things, either in research or in applied practice when we're adding up to what we have as our philosophy. So we are all on the same page in terms of how we're gonna materialize and we're gonna utilize this kind of things to facilitate research, to help the pe people uh, you know, pave the path towards their uh, uh, research activities, academic work and professional work. So it's about human enhancement. It's about optimization of the performance, right? So when we, most of our time is, is probably gonna get engaged in a digital life and we're gonna have a very good uh, you know, fraction of our time on, on our digital interaction. We need to have a very clear two-way street between the digital world and our emotion, number one. The digital world and our, and our attention or our cognition and the digital world and our memory and learning and, uh, and I mean, uh, interactive uh, work with the digital platforms. So like, like you were beautifully highlighting throughout your presentation and the talk you shared, uh, the thing which can emerge from your ideas and insight is, is that we have this kind of toolkits. We have the gadgets, we have the technology, and we have the emerging technology as we're approaching tomorrow. Uh, we we got to be uh, interacting with the technology in a very brain-friendly way. So to be brain-friendly with the technology, first, the technology should, should attract and it should like capture emotion. Because emotion, as we all appreciate, emotion is a gateway for attention. 
So if, if emotion is not there, if we have emotion dysregulation, then the attention is not you know, optimally performing. So when the attention is not there, because again, we all know that attention is a gateway for memory. So, so when the attention is not well performing there, then we we're confronting the lapse in memory and deficient learning and, you know, uh, you know, flight of uh, ideas or, or distractibility, you know, who would be all over the place. So as we're moving with Zarella concept for the crypto finance for the web three idea, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm just, I'm just thinking loudly. It could be even profitable idea and it could be a very nice practical idea to cross link these together because Zarella has got its own platform. It's got an own, uh, you know, uh, uh, minimally viable uh, ecosystem for what it's doing. And you got brilliant work already in place. Anna has one. O Olva has done perfect job on it. I know Pras and they are looking into uh, a building up a central excellence for artificial intelligence and machine learning in India, across India, and they're going to cross connect it with Zarella. That's the plan. So let's think about uh, cross connecting, uh, you know, cool tool with Zarella as we're moving down the road. And I think that uh, we all can see the huge opportunities in front of us and down the road. And we got like 70 something people. We already have a data bank of more than 300 participants. Some of us are are not able to make it, it's totally understandable, but I'm sure, I'm totally certain that people will catch up, will we'll watch this later on. So it was very insightful. Thank you for your insight, your wisdom, your great work, Dimitri. Thank you for have, all the speakers in the first panel. I have uh, I have a few questions and notes in the Q&A. May I answer them quickly? If it is less than a minute before, okay, before I will try to before be before we really approach fast. the okay. the break time, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, there are a few questions. Okay, what what do I think about predictive eye tracking labs? So I like this um, subject. I believe AI does a good job, and for some um, initial things like placing, like choosing between two types of content, which could potentially grab more attention. This is a good tool, this predictive eye tracking, AI-based eye tracking without the participant. But I'm uh, advocating that our attention is driven by situation, is driven by a particular need. And in this case, I would say for pre-screening some concepts, this is a good tool. But for the real life insights to understand how the web page works, or to understand how the mobile app works, it will not help. Even for the uh, ads, it really depends on the need of the consumers at this moment. Then I agree with Ravina that capturing trust is a good application for implicit response time, uh, uh, for, for implicit response time test. And um, uh, it is like we, we're using this, and um, we're, again, we're using implicit testing is very, you know, you need to narrow this segment. You cannot use implicit testing everywhere. It's not easy to understand. It's not easy to implement, but it provides you with really good results. And about sensory experience in digital experience, I don't have this uh, uh, so, so, uh, so much uh, uh, things, uh, uh, so much experience here. We do um, uh, 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 a lot of sonic, sonic logo testing. And uh, this is also like audio uh, sensory. And uh, for that, neuroscience is widely used. Right now, more and more brands going like digital with Sonic logo. And this is also a good topic for us, but in this presentation, it's covered, let's say, as one of many digital stimuli. <laughs> because again, we yeah. can talk hours about this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and that makes a ton of sense. That's pretty salient. And, and, I, and, and, I, and I totally echo what you just stated. Just in very uh, uh, very brief way in brackets, uh, we're kind of thinking about establishing the like a brain technology. Uh, I don't know, like a platform, or something somewhere. The idea is cooking, and I can and I bet and I can tell you that the food is going to be tasty. So we'll see how that's going to work out. Together, we'll we're, we'll have a blast of it. So the thing is that when we're using uh, objective measurements, as you pointed out, like including eye tracking or polygraphy, 
as 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 referred to what uh, Bert Martin was highlighting, like heart rate variability, skin conductance, like like EMG temperature and stuff. Also, we technology. have the polygraphy. We have real time brain mapping. We have functional brain mapping, including like MIG or functional MRI. And at the same time, we can we can just you know capture some data from quantitative EEG, a, a functional QEEG and event related potentials and so many other different platforms. So there is a huge potential in front of each and every one of us. And we're going to get the best out of these opportunities together and only together, right? So uh, there is a way to go. And we're gonna have like, uh, uh, we're gonna have like 20 minutes of uh, bio break. So, uh, just stand up, folks, stretch and have fun. Then you come back in 20 minutes. We'll be watching a very short video just to uh, pop up things before we move for uh, the next section. We're still looking towards three different more, um, uh, three more amazing talks by Anna, by Pras and Fatima. So I invite you to uh, join the, the section part two and we'll have a blast. All right. Thank you so much.